Hey guys, so today we are answering a, a subscriber question and the question in question is Frederick, which JavaScript framework has more potential in terms of scalability? So let's get into it. Well, th this is a very loaded question and I cannot imagine a scenario where I can give you an answer to this that isn't going to end with quite a lot of people disagreeing with me. So I'll just stick my neck out and I will go there anyway. So I will make an argument and the first argument I will make is that scalability has to do with a lot more complicated things than a lot of the people who are going to be naysayers in this, in this to on this topic is going to consider and I will just start by saying that when you talk about scalability one of the most important things is stability that is above all else one of the most important thing and the reason why it, it is an important thing is because when you scale something, it indicates a change over quite some time. It is also possible to make the argument that scalability is about performance, but in the term, in, in this scenario, we are not dealing with high performance applications in the same manner as you would in other, well, other systems, if you will. JavaScript UIs are usually not, they don't really require the same sort of like absolute bleeding edge super performance. So usually what scalability means in the, in the front end world is that it's actually sustainable. And currently that means that there's only three real options out there on the market. It's going to be React, it's going to be Angular and it's going to be Vue. Now the reason why I argue that these are the only real options right now is because these are the only frameworks that have the sort of mass adoption that is required for it to be feasible or for it to be very likely that these frameworks will be sustainable for a long time. In other words, they need to be maintained over time because as the industry evolves and as new tools get like into the market, you need someone who takes ownership over the product. If they don't, you may have bet or you may have actually invested in a tool that hinders you going forward as a company. And that is a very, very important thing to consider when you pick a tool. If you pick some obscure little library or framework that some one, like one single person is maintaining somewhere, that's going to be a very dangerous thing for a big project that's going to span several years. If you're just going to make it, you know, build it and ship it and, never, and, and forget about it, then it doesn't really matter all that much unless you, of course, think about the long term. But if for a long term investment, you need to think about that stuff. So that's narrowed us down to three options right now. So of those three options, I will tell you right now that the least I will cut out view immediately. And the reason why I will cut out view is not because I don't like view. It's not because view isn't great or anything like that. It is because view is not sustained in the same manner. It's not maintained in the same way as Angular and React is. Angular and React has two of the biggest companies in the world backing those two platforms. And although it is true that sometimes even, you know, a single developer or a very small group of developer or a smaller community can produce a tool that is truly sustainable and really high quality and really gets to be this big, massive super success, it is more of an a exception to the rule. And if you look at the job postings on the market, you will see that I am correct. Vue has a relevancy in the workplace, but it's not even in the same dimension as Angular and React. So even from a career perspective, betting your everything on view is a really bad move for a front end developer as it stands today. And I don't see that changing. And it ha has very little to do whether or not view is a good tool. It has to do with the stability of the platform. There are tools such as say Webpack that was started by a single, like a single person then kind of grew from that and then got adopted and fun and basically is now being sustained by more powerful organization who actually pool money into sustaining that tool. Vue is not that, is not, has, doesn't have the same story. So for scalability, Vue isn't really the best choice. At least from what I can see. And then you have, okay, the discussion between React and Angular. Now, the problem here is that although I will agree that, say, Angular is probably the, it was designed with the intention of being the most scalable thing. The problem with Angular is that most of the community find that although Angular is useful, it is a, 
it's a very tricky story to sustain over time. It grows legacy in a much faster manner than what happens in React. If you want to check that out, you can go and look at the, I think it's still last year, they haven't released the new, um, uh, the new uh, report from Stack Overflow. Angular was, as of last year, the one of the most used frameworks, but it was also one of the most feared and hated frameworks from the developer community or everybody who took that survey. And there is a reason for that. And the reason is, in at least from what I can see from my coworkers and my friends who actually do work in Angular, and I can also see it from people who are migrating from Angular to React. The problem with Angular is not that it's not scalable, it is that it's very hard to scale this to a very big code base simply because of, a, it's, a, it's, some, it's another topic, but it's, it ties into an, another video that I made a while back where basically I tried to explain why I personally prefer React over Vue, or sorry, React over Angular. And the simple answer is that Angular is going for quite a lot of empowerment in terms of choices, how you want to structure your application. And that is a very bad thing in a world where you have a very varying degree of skill level contributing, contributing to the project. Maximum empowerment is something that you give to true masters because true masters can handle that sort of power, but most people are not masters of JavaScript, which means that even if you give them all the possibilities in the world to structure their application exactly you know, just so, they're going to fuck it up because they simply don't understand what it is that they truly need in order to sustain the project over time. And that is why I personally think React is the most scalable solution on the market and considering that it is the most popular, not only job-wise, but also in terms of uh, popular opinion, there should be some truth to that. And the reason why it is so scalable is because it's designed in that exact manner. It's designed to be that scalable. Angular was not designed in the same, for the same reason as React was. React was designed by Facebook, who has one of the most complicated websites in the world for that intended purpose. Angular is not the only choice out there for, it was not designed during, uh, for the, those exact circumstances. And I think that Facebook has done a very good job with React when it comes to scalability, because what they understood, which is the critical part, is that there are two things that are truly, truly important in JavaScript land in order to scale, to scale a really, really large system. And that is number one, you need the simplicity of the component structures, the component structure, that simplicity. Basically, in, in a large code base, there is no way for you to know every part of the system. So if you need to know vast majorities of the system in order to be productive or not, then, then it's already not a, a scalable solution, not in a big company. It's going to be very, very tricky. So the component mindset and having the DOM tree, like the actual architecture, that is absolute genius because it's the simplest possible thing that you can build when it comes to a complicated UI. And the second thing they got right, which is the um, second problem of large scale JavaScript development is the state management system. Redux and Flux, and these, the, this, this concept of having a data flow that just goes from the top of the node tree all the way through the components is also absolute genius. It's, ba it's a very basic form of dependency injection. And that allows you to basically grasp all the things that you need to know about a single component by just looking at that component without, and you can even trace it all the way up until you find who is responsible for acquiring the data that you're getting. These concepts are the things that makes Re like make React truly scalable because I can hire a bunch of junior developers or I can hire some backend back developers who are kind of familiar with React and I can get them productive and I can trust that they will not, they will, they will not be given enough freedom to truly, truly mess up the code base in any meaningful way. And that is not, it's unfortunately not true for Angular in the same way, at least from what I can see and considering, as I said, the, stat the statistics and well, also from what I can hear when it comes to migration. I mean, it's very common from people, for people to migrate from Angular to React. The reverse is not that common. So what I want you to take away from this is that from my perspective, React is the most scalable solution simply because it has the popularity, it has the backing of a big company, so you can f be fairly certain that it, you can trust that it's going to stake around for quite a while, which is a very good thing for big organizations who scale to, like a scale an application to maybe having hundreds of people working on, uh, working on it. And it's, it's 
probably the simplest in all, all things considered. It's the simplest solution of the three frameworks when it comes to like onboarding people, getting people up to speed to how, with how it works. Setting it up is not all that simple, but it's very easy to get people very productive in React very quickly without much risk that they will, you know, make decisions that may cause a lot of legacy and impact the entire project. So that's basically how I feel about it. It's not that the others are not scalable. It's simply that from the three that we can, the three options here, so React is objectively, in my opinion, the best choice if we, if we simply consider the scalability aspect. And you may feel differently. I'm pretty sure there are some who will, but that's what I've found so far in my career. Have a great day.